This raised garden bed is in desperate need of a makeover and I'm just the guy to do it. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and in this video I'm not just going to show you how to quickly refurbish a raised garden bed but I'm also going to take you through the thought process and my decision making on what I do with a refurbishment like this. And can I say there is a lot more to it than you might think. It's simple, yes, but there's more to it. Let's get into it. Rightio, the first thing that I do when I come up to a bed that needs refurbishing is go, area clear, what happened? No? No, I think that's a, that's a different lesson, isn't it? Forget that. What I do is I just walk up to the bed, eyeballing the soil first, probably. Check it out, get a handful of it. What's going through my head right now as I'm doing this is, you know what, that soil's a bit light. It's got a lot of organic matter in it. You know, I like that. There's bark and sticks and there are some stones in it, good minerals, but it's, it's a little sandy. It hasn't got sand in it, it's just light. That's not great for water holding qualities. I want it to have a bit more structure, It'll be a little bit more sticky, not clay sticky. I want it to be able to hold water but still be free draining. Now, if this soil was at a standard that I was happy with, I would just simply add a little bit of fertilizer with that and then start growing in it. But since this bed needs a little bit of extra work and some more structure, how do I add structure to it? Well, you can use compost from your compost pile or you can buy bagged compost. You can add extra organic matter to it. But one quick way and one really good additive that I like to use is cow manure. And the reason why I like cow manure is because it's not overly fertile. So you can use a little bit more for a structural sense and get away with it. But we'll talk more about adding some cow manure when we get to that stage. First of all, it's just really the assessment. The second thing that comes to my mind is the thumbs down or thumbs up. I don't mean for this video, we, we want thumbs up for the video, but for the bed, the plants that are in it, do I give them the thumbs down and rip them out, put them in the compost pile or salvage and eat what we can? Or do I give it the thumbs up and keep them in that bed and sort of refurbish around them? Because you can do that and why would you? Well, you might want to keep a few plants that are growing well, and I've got a couple of examples of that, such as this Egyptian spinach is growing quite well. We're still using it, but I also want it to go to seed, and it's a really nice looking plant. And you want to save the seeds from your best plants. So why not let that grow on? I can plant around it. I can refurbish the bed around it and let that go to seed, collect the seeds so that I can have more Egyptian spinach next season. I've also got some bronze fennel over here too that is looking really good. It's starting to bounce back. I'm surprised it got through our hot summer. It's been in the bed for quite a while, but there's some small shoots coming from the base of the plants. So what I'm thinking of doing is keeping them in there because fennel is a wonderful cooking herb vegetable. And next to the fennel is some parsley. That's starting to go to seed. So I wouldn't mind keeping that Italian leaf parsley, collecting that seed and replanting it to get some fresh new plants. So they've all got the thumbs up, just like this video should get. But thumbs down, well, there's gonna be a few of them. We've got some, a mixture of radish and rocket that has self-seeded in here. It's great that it's self-seeded, but I'm afraid I'm gonna knock them on the head. The plants aren't doing the best they self-seeded a little bit early in the season when it was still too hot. When they seed sometimes too early, they get sort of cooked by the elements. They can get attacked by pests. I'm gonna remove those radishes and rocket seedlings and get them out of there. These leeks here, they're starting to come good again too now that the season is cooling down. But to be honest, they're old stock. I'm not gonna leave them in there. I've got some that did go to seed and I'm gonna re them for a whole bunch of new plants. So I'm gonna pull them up, trim them back, and we'll salvage them for the crisper and eat them. And obviously there's a number of weeds in here too that I'm just gonna simply lightly till out. And the last decision I'm gonna make is what am I gonna grow in this bed next? Now you could leave the bed rest 
if you are doing a policy of rotating beds and leaving some beds rest for a season that can sometimes really help the soil rejuvenate if nothing is depleting it i.e growing in it and sucking out those nutrients but in this case i'm going to rotate crops straight in for most crops i prefer to not plant the same type of crop in the same bed in consecutive seasons because that can lead to a buildup of diseases especially in the soil so because this bed has had leaks in it i'm not going to plant anything from the onion family and it's also had several root crops in there radish etc so i might steer away from root crops at the moment also what i'm going to plant is some lettuce this is an australian yellow leaf which i haven't tried before i'll probably have had it in the garden but i can't remember it and also this different type of kale it's a lighter leaf than i'm used to i've planted the darker nero before but this is a jagello nero so obviously a, an italian different type right keeping the leeks pulling them out let's just have a look and see how they are yeah no they're looking pretty healthy oh no yeah nice and crisp oh lovely I'll leave some of this dug back into the bed, some of this organic matter because the worms will love eating it. These will go good in the crisper. Very nice. A lot of these weeds can just get dug back in. Some of the bigger ones can get taken out so they don't re-sprout and cause problems. There you go, look at that. And these are the little pups that I was talking about that are coming off the side. They're coming actually out of the base of the plant. And so I'm gonna just chop this up and I'm gonna replant them. And I'll leave the other clump as is, just in case I stuff up and these little pups don't work. Now I've got this cow manure from a dairy farm, just a local one. What I've done here is I've covered it over with some hessian. The beauty of it is it lets the moisture through, lets it breathe, lets it decompose naturally. I've actually inoculated this pile with some worms. I've just put this on here to stop the hessian from blowing. Oh, it smells just like wonderful soil. Look at it, black gold. And see what I mean by structure? That is going to go great in the garden. All right, one barrel load should do it. And we'll mix it in now, all that beautiful black gold and moisture holding, not only fertile, but not overly fertile, but fertile and beautiful, but also moisture holding structural content, organic matter with worms, added extra worms, these little red wigglies. See, I planted them, planted them. I sowed the eggs into that pile so that when I do transplant some of this manure into a garden bed, it has an extra gift with it. Just gonna spread it around liberally and then I'm gonna dig it in. And see how this bed has sunk down a little bit as well. If you just put a handful of blood and bone or chicken manure in there, something high in fertility, that's all well and good, but you're not getting structure back in. Everything you grow in a raised garden bed takes things out of the soil and it also sinks. I did a Google culture method here. So there's organic matter underneath that top layer of soil and that is always moving and sinking and decaying. So to add more height to that bed, it's the no dig method of adding organic matter rather than constantly digging and turning. This is why I don't garden with gloves. Manure in the hands, nothing like it. 
had someone comment the other day on one of my videos that I touched manure with my hands, how disgusted they were. Uh, oh. Middle mix in. And you also then don't have the seedlings trying to grow in that top layer of manure, which could be a little bit too rich for them. And I also want to break up some of the larger bits of that manure. Integrate it into the bed. Just even the bed out. So that it's nice and even for seed sowing. Okay, now we'll add some mulch. Sugarcane mulch is one of my favorites. It's easy, it's seed free, but you could also use bark. Wood chip is another good one. You should wear a face mask when you're working with lots of dusty materials. Or I should say, I'm saving my face mask for going out in public. For a garden bed this size, you're looking at maybe half a bale of this stuff. And this is about $13 a bale, Australian, which is around about probably $5 US. Right, that's the mulching done. Now I'm gonna just make some nice little gaps in the bed, about 25 to 30 centimeters apart spacing so that I can sow the lettuce and the kale in these rows. So I just part, like Moses, I just part the mulch, breaking up any big bits, any gaps still as I go, getting rid of any leaves in the way so they don't sow on top of some leaf matter. And I'll just work around this fella here. The lettuce or the kale won't matter too much because the sun comes over this way, it's going to get them anyway. It'll shade it out a little bit, but not too much. The kale's a fairly big plant, so maybe we put it on that side so it can sort of compete with the fennel. And I'll put the lettuce on this side here so it doesn't have to compete as much with the larger plants, and that'll probably grow better. So let's do that. We'll sow the kale first. And I'm going to over sow these as much as I can, well, the whole packet really, and then I can harvest mini plants as they grow. Hopefully a whole lot of them will come up. And if a, don't, a lot don't come up, well, at least I've increased my odds by sowing a whole heap of them. As you can see, I'm just sprinkling them in the furrows here that I've made. And if there's some gaps and others are uh, lots, well then I can just move them around and just prick them out as seedlings and move them to places where other ones didn't come up. The lettuce seed is quite a bit different to the kale seed, which the kale seed looks just like a standard cabbage seed from the same family, whereas the lettuce has got an oblong, flat type of seed, more like a herb or a dill type seed. I'm just gonna sprinkle them in the same way. Okay, now I'm just gonna cover them with a little bit of nice premium potting mix. You could use a seed raising mix or you can use your own compost. Just a light layer on top. Don't go too deep because these are only small seeds and they don't need much of a covering. Now I'll just put those fennel plants in the corner. I'm not going to try to take them away from the stem. I'm just going to break the big pieces of stem off with these little seedlings, like so, and try to keep them on there. See how that breaks away from the crown? And then I'm just going to plant them in separate. That'll work well. Pat down that potting mix that I just put on top. I mean, if you're watered now, that it also sort of do similar thing, but I like just to pat it down and shore it up a bit. Now just give it a good water in and water these seedlings every day now, or these seeds, until they start coming through. And that's all that has to happen, and that's the refurb. We'll see how easy that raised bed refurb was. Not hard at all, is it? That is going to do really well. I'm looking forward to some fresh kale and lettuce coming up in a few weeks. 
probably less than that and we'll be harvesting them in about 30 especially the baby seedlings as we thin them out in about 30 to 60 days and uh, yeah should be a nice start to our growing season well i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you give it a big raised bed thumbs up refurbished thumbs up whatever you want to call it thanks a lot for watching subscribe if you haven't already bye for now just got it in i think before the sun was totally down yeah cool